Hello everyone, it is February 11th, 2019. I am Susan Oros, I'm parent of a young verbal autistic young adult female child. We're having a special group meditation which was inspired by a recent article that I had read shared by an adult person with autism. The article was from the website National Council on Severe Autism, a voice from the world of inpatient hospitalization. Uh, but before I get fully into this session, I'd like to introduce a few friends joining me today and get their sound voice vibration imprinted into this recording. So um, one by one, if we can unmute yourselves. Why don't we start with, I see Leslie first. So if Leslie, if you just want to come on for a second and say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Leslie Nall. I'm happy to be joining everyone. And I'm glad to serve our intent. Thank you. Next one I see on the list is uh, Connie. Good evening, I'm Connie Regalado, and I'm happy to be here tonight. And I see Laura. Good evening, uh, I'm Laura, and I'm calling from snowy Wisconsin. Happy to be here. Thank you. And Lori? Um, Lori Sheyu from Ventura County, and also very happy to be here. And Malena. Yeah, hi, this is Malena. Um, um, I'm from Virginia. Um, I'm very pleased, happy to be here. And last but not least, Marissa. Hi, everyone. This is Marissa, founder and owner of Autism Heals. I live in serve the Los Angeles area right now and I am honored and very blessed to be a part of this meditation tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, this is Carl. I'll be anchoring in the divine masculine in this meditation. <laughs> That's my husband. Um, he's on here as well. So if you're listening to this recorded version of this meditation, I just want to let you know that it will be also be posted on our YouTube channel as a video, and the YouTube channel is Moonoros One, um, as it, you can see on the bottom. Well, you can't see. It's um, M O O N Oros One. So at the end of the video version is our contact Facebook pages and some of our website links if you are looking for more information or support. So about the article I was referencing, it really touched me as a parent who has experienced firsthand random outbursts and um, at times self-injurious behaviors from Sammy, our daughter. She uh, has had, you know, explosions un unexplained throughout her life. And, you know, we have destroyed furniture and have had holes in our walls and not now, I'm not saying that in a disrespect to her. It took me a long time, took us a long time to understand what was possibly going on. So she had a full range of therapies offered, and we even, you know, got desperate at times to try some meds, which really didn't didn't help uh, in the long run. So this article is by a doctor who works in a neurobehavioral unit which is like a psychiatric ward for children, teens, and young adults. And in it, she explains that 75% of the beds in her unit are nonverbal autistics. So the tone from this doctor is very compassionate, and she's very concerned that this is a trend around the country. One of the cases she describes was so severe that a young girl even lost her eye from self-injurious behaviors. And I know that many parents are under a lot of stress and that our medical system may not be equipped to know what to do in these circumstances. This article really struck me because while there are more and more of our quote nonverbal autistic children and adults who are demonstrating they are cognitively intact, 
through the uses of alternative communication methods, the writing of books and blogs, and yet there's this group who continue to experience this deep pain with their families. So my daughter, after many hard knocks, moved me to change my perception of who she is. And this doesn't mean she is, quote, fixed, but it has guided me and our family to embrace who she really is, which in turn has enabled me and our family to live with more of a sense of grace in our life. And I know that many of our kids have such different sensory systems. Sometimes parents can just be overwhelmed with trying to keep their kids safe. And it's not that easy to just tell someone to change your perception overnight. So this session is not to judge anyone, but rather to hopefully inspire perceptual changes amongst the parents, caregivers, and within the medical community. The doctor who wrote this article I'm talking about seems very caring, but you know I don't agree that these children are intellectually low functioning as she is describing them. And I found this out with my own daughter when we were introduced to the rapid prompting method uh, about three years ago. And the parents and professionals joining me here today certainly have had that experience as well. I know too, though, that these alternative and new communication methods are still poo-pooed by many, and we're not here to debate that. One of my intentions today is not to, quote, force perceptual change, but to offer heart heartfelt support, which then can soften perceptions and open so to something different. I know that I personally was not willing to accept a different view until all other options were exhausted. And while this meditation is aimed at the medical community and parents and caregivers who are currently in this situation, it can be used for other issues you might want to address like a community or school. So basically, after you've participated in the meditation, if it resonates for you once or twice, and it resonates, simply play the recording and you can write down where you'd like to direct the energy of it and put it next to the recording while it's playing. And you don't even have to play it loud or consciously listen to it. By having listened to it a couple of times, you entrain to the energy. Changes might not happen immediately, and you may be guided to feel what you can adjust in your life, such as your own thought patterns. Now, we, before we get into the meditation portion, does anybody else uh, and all you other parents and professionals here have anything else you want to add, you know, to that? Or, you know, you don't have to, but just putting that out. Yeah, it's Laurie. Um the founder of the gift of autism, I just offer everyone to open their heart to a new perspective, uh, a more expansive perspective of seeing your children for who they are, whether they're children or adults. Thank you. Yeah, and Lori is certainly a forerunner in this. I mean, she was had um, founded the gifts of autism even before I was willing to acknowledge that there was even a gift in autism. <laughs> So she's been doing this for a long time, and you'll find her contact information if you uh, feel resonant with what she does uh, at the end of the the, uh, the slides here. Anybody else want to add anything else? Um, yes, this is um, Malena, um, mom of um, awesome missing girl. Um, uh, founder of the Light of Autism a Facebook group. We were well, co-founder because my daughter was inspired me to start this this group. Um, it, it's open to all parents and autists to share to share the light to share this perception about autism and we hope we can inspire many many other families um i can share my intention um uh well, can we do that um after we start the meditation uh because we'll set the intention and the energy so that it um that's okay 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Melina. Yeah, Melina is definitely a forerunner um, amongst parents and inspires many to take a different perspective. Um, she loves all children, loves everybody. So mm -hmm. she has the most loving heart. Um, yes. So thank you, Melina. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Yeah, because my intention is to keep this kind of straightforward and be in the, the energy of this. So if you're all ready, let's prepare ourselves for meditation. Sit comfortably wherever you may be, whether you're lying down or sitting down or just listening as you're going about your day. Let's align to ourselves. We're going to engage something called the Hara line, the vertical channel, which comes down. Let's say from, imagine from the farthest heaven above your head, goes down through the center of our heads and out through oh, the, the tailbone, perineum area between your legs. And let's connect to, intend to connect to the fifth dimensional earth. Let's clear all our channels, our vertical channels. We use this symbol called liquid choker ray. Further clear. Clear the horizontal channels goes through our bodies horizontally. I'm going to engage something that I um, have been working with, the di double diamond pillar to shield our space, our group space. And in this shielded space of the mother of the God and the mother and the father of the God, Activate our soul consciousness. And allow your soul consciousness to be the guiding force during this meditation process. May this meditation be in alignment with your soul essence and all that you do. This is something called the dodecahedron, which is a 12-sided polygon with the earth and a tri-wave infinity symbol to balance polarity. And I engage some Reiki symbols as I was guided that the Reiki, since it's been on the planet for a few decades now, is a familiar energy for many people, even if they don't practice Reiki. We engage a symbol called Honsha Zeishonen, which is known as the distant symbol. It kind of will hold the field of the energy that we're working in. And surrounding that, I'm going to activate another symbol. This is not Reiki. It's called Hoshen, which will further Balance and stabilize the energy field. Also take a moment now to center ourselves in the heart, right in the middle of your chest. And intend to draw an energy cord from your heart. Go down to, and let it spread down your each of your legs from your heart. And also from your feet, center of your feet. We have chakras there and connect those, your feet to the fifth dimensional earth as well. Imagine branches spreading out and connecting with the fifth dimensional earth. 
activating a symbol called Seheki, Reiki symbol, to balance the mental and emotional bodies. Feel it generating a sense of peace and tranquility. Feel the pool of divine love and grace surrounding you. Activate liquid chokure as well to hold our intentions. My intention, one of my intentions is that may the parents and caregivers experience peace and grace in their hearts as they sleep. May dignity be returned to these children and their families. And from um, a friend who couldn't make it tonight, she wanted this intention. May those who work with the autism community begin each day with the intention of seeing with their hearts and not just their eyes. And may the light of source permeate their hearts and minds and allow new courage to overtake their actions and words, to allow speech and communication to have a more expansive meaning within themselves, to come to know that it is so much more than words. And at this moment, I'd like to now open it up for all of you to add any other intentions you wish to place into this field. Malena, you had your intention you wanted to add? Oh uh, yes. Um, may all parents of awesome children, autists, may awaken to the true nature of their children, to see beyond the physical, and to open their hearts to an expansion of unconditional love. That children and parents can live in harmony and peace living their united soul purpose on earth. Thank you. And so it is. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I've got uh, something. I would like to um, see the parents um, dig deeper for another effort uh, and courage to try again and um, do something different and think a little differently and open their hearts to what we're doing, but not to shut down in exhaustion and fear, but to, to try again to be open and to reach out to us, any one of us. Yes, I like that word courage you used. Yes, it takes courage. It does, mm -hmm. because you get beaten up and, and you, you wanna throw in the towel, but mm -hmm. don't, mm -hmm. try again. Try again. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good word to put into the mix. Courage. I like what you, what you said. Thank you. And so it is. Hi, I'd like to do my intention. Okay. This is Connie. Uh, my intentions for this global meditation session is to play a role in amplifying the energies that will be focused on shining a new light of understanding to um, our, our autists, individuals and their families and the professionals who work uh, or have encounters with them. May our work and presence be felt not only by them, but to all hearts here so that we can step into a new way. Thank you. And so it is. Leslie, it looks like you had something. Oh, go ahead, Lori. Okay, yeah, Lori here. Um, my intention is to invite people to look through a new lens of possibility and don't believe everything you hear. Just dig deep and ask better questions. Ask who they really are and they'll show you the children will show you who they are and that that that's been my journey it's been quite magnificent 
Mm, thank you. And so it is. Leslie, were you going to add something? No, that's okay. Oh, somebody um, over oh, yeah. okay. I'll add something. Um, I've been thinking about this today. It's a um, two-part intention. I'm trying to fractalize this intention. Um, so one, my intention is to ease global pain. Mm -hmm. These children are reflecting the severe level of pain that the human collective is in. Mm. So I want to ease that pain globally for all humans who are in pain. Mm -hmm. And as it relates to the children, the article is about self-injurious behaviors, um, complete confusion and, and pain within the autism collective. Mm. My intention within this collective is to ease pain just enough for these parents who have been traumatized by the system themselves mm -hmm. to ease their pain just enough to where something happens uniquely to that mother, to that father, that only he or she can hear, feel, sense, and understand perfectly for him or her to ease the pain just enough to inspire that perceptual change mm -hmm. that this meditation was created for. Um, I think pain is a constant in human existence, but if we can ease it, mm -hmm. make it tolerable, um, that's when things can get loosened up and flexible and pliable mm -hmm. and movable and bendable. And, um, and the willingness to see again differently. And the willingness. It, it, it opens up a space for a renewed hope. Mm -hmm. So that's my intention, to ease hope to ease pain mm -hmm. to renew hope. Thank you. Yes, I certainly I certainly understand that one. <laughs> Thank you. And so it is. So Leslie, uh looks like you might be ready. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry I got goofed up before. Uh, my intention is to support a new way of thinking and to know how I can best serve that profound shift and to give hope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Leslie worked with us for many years and she was like the thread sometimes. <laughs> so thank you, Leslie. And so it is. And for those of you listening to the recording, you know, you can pause this and add your add your uh, intention as well. It could be for your family, it could be for your child, yourself. So we invite you to do that as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, our new, our new puppy. So let's take a moment then with all those intentions in there and center in our heart and expand yourself out we're really as soul beings we're really really vast and big um, so big that we can stretch our consciousness out to the level of the ionosphere which is the outer layer of our atmosphere and the ionosphere from my understanding is where um, the sun's currents are um let's see met by this layer this atmospheric layer of the earth and becomes charged to 
uh, electrically infuse the planet. So let's use our intention and become that vast soul consciousness and become as big as that ionosphere and with all the intentions that we just put into this geometry of the dodecahedron um, connect to that ionosphere and let's intend to transmit these intentions to all those on the planet who can feel and resonate with what we're talking about here today, who are ready for something different, who are ready for a new perception about their child, whether that's a parent, caregivers, uh, family, other family members, doctors, nurses, other aides and staff that work in these units and hospitals to take, to be inspired to take a new look at these individuals that we have labeled as being autistic. So take a moment and take a few breaths and, and intend to connect with the people that you resonate with, because we all have a, a unique soul signature and we're each going to resonate for a different, different groups of people. So allow ourselves to be that conduit, be that electrical current, a gentle electric current, and reach as many people as we can. And that as more and more people participate in this meditation through recordings, the recording that they'll be able to reach more and more people around the planet because there is a reason why these autists are here and they're autists like artists you know to me as soul beings who are here to literally break down systems so that we can realign to something that is balanced. This is what this tri-wave infinity symbol represents. It's the balance of that extreme polarity. And we've forgotten, like Marissa says, talking about pain, we've forgotten that so many people live in pain. We have been given pharmaceuticals and other methods to let's say disconnect from that pain but it's through acknowledging that pain and understanding that it's there it's like a first step to allow yourself to feel what is meant to be felt and it starts within that space and it can be hard and I, you know, certainly have been down that road. But the magnificence that can be attained by this perceptual shift is, is really quite amazing. Like I said, our daughter has, you know, certainly had her trials. And it's not always easy still. But having a better understanding that she's a soul being here, a vast soul being that cannot be fit into the same box of a human form that we grew accustomed to. By knowing that now, then it allows for more grace to operate in our home and our family. And this is something that we want all parents and families to be able to experience as well. Does anybody have anything else to add to this part? 
slowly move on. Okay. The next portion of this meditation has to do with caduceus. This is the, the symbol for the medical model, medical community in Western society. And it is placed in this geometry, which is called a vector equilibrium, coined by, um, um, losing his name right now, so I won't, I won't try to say his name, because I've forgotten it right now. Um, but it's a geometry rep which represents the zero point field for balance and symmetry. It's in the zero point field that God creates, the creator or source creates. It's the field where we can dissolve old patterns. It's, it has a neutrality to it because God, the God source creates in a neutrality. Not meaning that it's devoid of emotions or doesn't care, but meaning that all is freely given and that all is loved in creation. And so we're using this symbol of caduceus in the zero point field to begin to dissolve those very hardwired, rigid constructs of the medical model that says that these autists are damaged, that they're less than. In this article that this doctor wrote, she is very compassionate, but she describes them as being, you know, mentally, let's say deficient because they're not cognitively, that um, the cognitive retardation is a comorbid um, effect. Uh, with autism, so that it's meaning that it's part of autism. And um, if we open ourselves even to these new ways that these kids are able to communicate, demonstrate what they know through facilitated communication and not the rapid prompting method, then they're demonstrating how much they do know. And I have personally witnessed that with, you know, our daughter after years and years of being in special education where they're going over the same material over and over again. And you can imagine a person who is really intellectually intact and perhaps trapped by a body that they can't control, how insane that can feel at times when you're repeatedly asked, show me the letter A, give me the yellow block and because you can't consistently perform that test, then you become labeled as being mentally deficient. And yet many of these individuals retain their heartfelt love for humanity and God, um, they write about God. You know, I know Sandy in her earliest RPM session, she would talk about God. And this wasn't with me, this was with, with the uh, facilitator. But she would say things like, there, there, I can tell you that there really is a God. There really is. And so many other kids who are writing books now and how freely they talk about God and love and what they share. So... Um, I offer this to all the doctors who are open to listen, all the therapists and the staff and nurses that work in these hospitals to look at our children differently, to say, hmm, I look in that child's eyes and there's intelligence in there. I see a person or I see a soul looking back at me. So if we can inspire more and more people to look upon these seemingly broken and fragmented bodies, then 
who bring dignity back to their lives and give hope to the parents and show them courage that they can go another day. So I'm gonna open it up and ask anybody else if they have anything else that they wanna add or say to the medical community or the doctors out there. Um, anything from the heart or your own experiences as a parent or as a professional. This is all part of the energy in the yeah. meditation. Go ahead. Um, I want to add about the sensitivity, the sensory piece, because I feel like we haven't really even touched the surface on this topic. Mm -hmm. um, that we need to take responsibility for our, our own energy, our attitudes when we're around the children, or anytime really. Um, and just, you know, they're, they're amazing mirrors. So just to be aware of that, I mm -hmm. think it's a huge opportunity to look at the sensory piece. And I think if we control or work on our own energy, that we can make it a lot easier for these children and adults on the spectrum and everyone, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, their um, sensory systems are very unique. And to maybe just even ask the question, is this child or individual diagnosed with autism having these outbursts because of sensory overload? And yes, how do our, how does our energy contribute to make it worse? And vice versa, then what can we do to help make it come better or help them to calm down, you know, even faster? That's one, that's one technique that I really, we really had to learn in our home too with Sammy. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, I was going to also say exactly what you said. Um, I, I always bring to the, uh, bring to attention, you know, if, if your child, you know, is, attracted to a certain person, you know, a certain energy, you know, there, there's success, you know, it's kind of like success leaves clues, you know, <laughs> in, in, energy leaves clues too. Um, and also if sometimes it's actually planetary, I know a lot of people have heard about full moon has certain energies. And so sometimes there's a lot more bigger reasons for their sensory or sensitivities to come up. So yeah. That's definitely been our experience with Sammy, especially when it comes mm -hmm. out of the blue and there's nothing else going on right. that triggered. That That's triggered. when you start looking there, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And I know this doesn't seem like a traditional meditation, but in this talking, we're bringing up the consciousness of this and putting this into the field um, that uh, our intention to permeate um, through that ionosphere. So maybe not a traditional meditation, but we're in the energy. Anybody else want to share or add? If you could talk to one of these doctors, I'll, I'll add to it. Mm -hmm. I want to offer the energy of forgiveness mm -hmm. and compassion to doctors, nurses, techs, therapists who either intentionally or unintentionally cause emotional, physical, and psychological pain mm -hmm. on patients who are put into these facilities. Yes. Who are completely confused and have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I say this from a very real place. There are lots of um, professionals that I want to forgive. Mm -hmm. I my have woken up in isolation rooms mm. in restraints 
after traumatizing forced injections. Mm. So I've been in a psych hospital where there was a pediatric wing and I saw the children Mm. and it's heartbreaking. And I've I've done the yelling and screaming at the doctors. Um, That doesn't get anywhere. Mm. So I want to offer forgiveness, compassion, and may the energy of this group meditation enter into the professional field with Mm. love so that they can start their perceptual shift Mm. on a deep level, a personal level, and a professional level. Mm -hmm. I certainly resonate with that. And I've done my share of mm, not the best parent behavior (laughs) myself uh, as we've raised our children. And certainly, you know, before I understood Sammy out of frustration and that's, that's when we, uh, got broken furniture, honestly, is when, you know, I didn't understand and would um, get mad at Sammy for an outburst and I made it worse, you know. So, um, yes, forgiveness for, you know, all these people who kind of been in that scenario, forgiveness to the parents to forgive yourselves, that it's okay. You know, we didn't, we didn't know. I mean, we don't get a manual for raising our children, although there's many manuals out there for typical children, right? There's no, um, although some people try, right? Um, There's no specific manual for an autistic individual. And to add on top of it, all their sensory systems are different. They're so different. You know, what one child is attracted to sensory-wise, another one might hate. And so... You know, uh, you can't use one method fits all. And that is part of their purpose because it forces us to uh, deal with people more on an individual basis and to really get in touch with our own intuition, which you know, is covered over by pain. And that is one of the reasons why acknowledging pain is so important as well. That's one more. So thank you for bringing up forgiveness. Yes, go ahead. Um, that um, also came through um, to us inside this zero point field the alternative doctors. Mm. Um, those doctors that are trying their best to offer different modalities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Biomedical doctors, or etc. Mm-hmm. But trying will give to the parents many kind of supplements or um, modalities such as calculation, uh, who has a lot of um, controversy, I would say. Mm. Um, some success, some some not. Right. right. In some children, it's successful, in others, don't. Um, as Lucy has told me, when I when I took her to, to some biomedical doctors, um, she didn't she didn't want to use the uh, chelation that the doctor recommend, and I mm-hmm. I feel I feel it don't do it mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I try other supplements and other stuff. And mm-hmm. Lucy showed me that she can. They they have the ability to to morph the mm. 
right the, mm -hmm. to morph any treatment and any simple lab mm -hmm. um, yeah so <laughs> it's so, yeah. yes yeah so they might not be ready to to use those supplements or those supplements or are not in right alignment for mm -hmm. in alignment for them for them that's in alignment right. with their vibration right so it is more recommendable that parents tuning into their children at least try mm -hmm. right to, to see what's in alignment with them Right. And also, it's, it's, I know it's not easy, but mm -hmm. try to see the timing also. Right, in, right. In what process uh, the children, you and your children, because ultimately they want us to, to also for us to see our true through nature, through selves, um, authentic selves, right? right. They, they, so they have a sole purpose for us, um, for humanity. Right. So, so it sounds like you, you're saying um, you want the parents to uh, be empowered with their intuition. Um, yeah. Yes, to be, to, um, to know what's right you know, for them and what's right for, you know, their child. I think one of the issues, one of the things that you're bringing up for me, Melissa, I mean, Melina, is uh, that with this, even with this medical model, right, that we've been conditioned and taught that these are the experts and we have to go to them for the answers and what is right and what treatment is, um, is right. And that somehow, you know, we've been, um, you know, giving our par power away as parents. And mm -hmm. by getting in touch with our intuition, then we can begin to discern what may be right and not right, you know, for our child. So uh, I, I like what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then... You know, it's interesting to note that even from that article that I was, you know, referencing is that she's, this doctor is talking about the fact that some, that even kids are being turned away, you know, they're saying, telling, their doctors telling them, we can't do anything for each other. We don't know what to do, you know, um, and that, that says a lot, you know, right there that, um, the same system is not working anymore, you know? And so we need to look at, we need to change our perception. And by doing that, we can create new solutions or be inspired with new solutions. But it's time to get out of that box of this medical model that this is it and that this is the truth for, you know, that fits everyone. So I'm feeling this caduceus symbol and I'm feeling the edges of the symbol like vibrating and dissolving, you know, like it wants to, you know, at some level. Um, and so I'm going to take a moment here and even draw this um, liquid, uh, fire serpent, which is a little variation of the fire serpent that um, Reiki practitioners uh, use, but this is the liquid fire serpent, and also liquid violet flame to now begin to, you know, acknowledge that, you know, the medical model does not have all the answers. You know, there is new information coming in if we are just open enough to receive it. And for those doctors out there, researchers, who may be feeling that inkling inside to 
look at it from a different perspective, but maybe afraid because of their, you know, peer pressure that comes from their own other professionals. That um, we give you courage, we offer courage to you to, you know, step up and have the courage to speak out. And there's a, um, a pediatrician, a doctor who has an autistic child, Andrea Labudi, who is doing just that as well, um, breaking paradigms. So it is possible. Anything else? Anyone else have anything? Leslie, you're unmuted. Uh, yeah, along those same lines, I wanted to acknowledge those people in the medical profession and educators who who serve our children with open hearts and with compassion. And I, I truly believe if if those people can be shown new new ways, new paths, um, lateral thinking that they that they will change mm -hmm. uh, because most do serve with good intentions mm -hmm. and i think our job is to show them new ways to look at things mm -hmm. and to support them mm -hmm. in okay. the struggles that they have within their own professions mm -hmm. I like that. So the energy of support in this field, support and an acknowledgement that when they in went into this field, you know, it was probably with a heart, you know, to to want to serve, want to do something good. Yes. You know? And yeah, we can get lost in the system or by the system because of the rigid nature of the foundation, you know, that um, it's been operating on. I mean, I certainly felt that too myself. I was afraid to come out, you know, a few years ago when I started shifting my perception of Sammy because I thought people are going to say I'm crazy. Um, and we were having this conversation before <laughs> that crazy is the, the new normal. So, um and that if, go ahead support promotes change it's what allows people to sh to change mm -hmm. they feel supported in it rather than um criticized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly because when we become critical then it just puts their defenses up and can then block any change from um, happening you know so i like that support the energy of support and acknowledgement of their heart felt intentions when they went into the field and crazy is the new normal <laughs> it's cool to be crazy as connie was saying yeah mm -hmm. thank you Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody want to add anything else before we do a little bit more energy with work with this caduceus symbol to dissolve? So with our aligning to our heartfelt intentions. May I say for all of us that the medical model has had its place in our history. It's served us well, you know, for, for many, many, many decades. We made progress using the medical model you know, in preventing diseases from spreading, um, learning how to treat, you know, pains and ailments. But that now perhaps it's time to acknowledge 
that it has gone as far as it can go. And that in order for humanity to now evolve, progress, it's time to align to our hearts again, reflect on what is working and what is clearly not working, ask for that inner guidance and wisdom which is really trying to reconnect through the heart, you know, which is where we really begin to access our soul, that there are answers. These autists are literally bringing in that consciousness field with their physical beingness. They're anchoring that with their physical bodies and that perhaps they look broken because they're showing us that our system is breaking, that this medical model system is broken, masking pain with medications is not the answer because it causes the body to become diseased. It causes the body to start to fail. It causes outbursts around the world, whether it's shootings or killings, because that the pain of that anger or rage that hasn't been acknowledged is coming up and it's coming out, whether we like it or not. And only by coming into peace with ourselves and opening to the fullness, which is our true soul essence, can we move out of this system that is really breaking down. And so we place our hearts into this field, around this caduceus symbol. And by the power of our beingness, we assist in dissolving the consciousness structure that this caduceus symbol is based upon. I invoke the tri-wave infinity symbol to further assist in the, the graceful dissolution of this foundation through the zero point field where the eternal love of the God source comes through and allows the light that's within all of us to be seen. May we all each take a new look at what we call autism and for today's session, what we call nonverbal or non-speaking autism, that these individuals deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and that by opening your perceptions, they will show you something truly magnificent. Anybody else has anything to add to that? Shall we close and end? No. I just want to add gratitude to you, Susan. <laughs> thank you. For, um, for doing this. Um, thank you very much. It was very, very needed. Thank you. And thank you for showing up with all that you are, all of you. Thank you for, thank you for showing up on short notice and for um, 
all that everyone here on this uh, session does and all those who are listening to the recording, we acknowledge you too for being here, for listening, for to be open, to uh, see with new eyes, feel with a new heart, and open that pain body, even if it's just a little bit, to find that intuitive power that is behind the pain. So we acknowledge all the parents for what they do. We know how hard it can be, but there really is something truly glorious taking place. So with that, we close and end this session and seal it into the light. We surround this caduceus symbol with this symbol called Hoshen, which comes from Sami. To honor the time that you've had here. And we offer grace and tranquility for all the beings that have participated in this session tonight. So thank you very much. And so these are the parents that participated. We, Connie, Laura, and Elena and I are doing uh, a teleconference support group called Supporting Awesome Conscious Evolution. And if you join the Facebook groups, Light of Autism or Autism Doorway to Consciousness, you can get um, information about when those free meetings are. Um, these are some of our email addresses for myself, Malena, Connie, and Laura. These are the professionals that joined us today, Lori Sheyu. Her website is the Gifts of Autism. And this is where she can be reached. And Leslie Knoll. She has many, many years of experience also working with direct directly working with differently abled children and does acupressure massage and reiki and marissa is um uh very intuitive um marissa has helped me a lot with sammy and all these people have helped me um very very much in my in my life and my in my growth so um we hope that whether you're professionals or interested um, citizens uh, or parents that you'll reach out to one of us as parents or one of these professionals to um, maybe just to get a dialogue started if you want through email. Uh, three of us are Awesomeism practitioners. That was founded by Susie Miller. Her website is www.susiemiller.com. That's how I um, learned to trust my communication and connection with Sammy, because I just thought I was I was crazy. I just was convinced I was crazy, and people were going to tell me I'm crazy. Um, but uh, that helped me um, a great deal. So just to let everyone know, there is um, hope, and there is there still is light in your life. So thank you very much for joining us.